The yeas are 407, the nays 19. Two-thirds being in the affirmative, the rules are suspended. The bill is passed. Earlier this week, the House voted to tighten travel restrictions to the U.S. Now the measure requires visitors from these 38 countries to obtain a visa if they've traveled to Syria, Iraq, Iran, or Sudan during the past five years. The bill also requires countries participating in the program to share information about suspected terrorists. In a rare move, Democrats supported the bill, and even President Obama called for tightening restrictions during his address Sunday evening. We should put in place stronger screening for those who come to America without a visa so that we can take a hard look at whether they've traveled to war zones. The president also called for a review of the K-1 fiancé visa program. We now know that the female San Bernardino shooter was here on that particular type of visa. Montana Congressman Ryan Zinke joins us now to discuss the bill. Thanks so much for joining us here on Newsmax Now. Always a pleasure to have you. Yeah, pleasure to be with you. Congressman, I want to get your take on this bill. Well, I, I think it alludes to what I call the triple threat. You have illegal immigration, primarily from the South, although the northern border is, it be, is becoming more of a concern. You had the refugee issue where we have unvetted refugees in which Congress took action. And finally, the last part of it is legal travel, either by visa or otherwise. And the facts are clear. There's five thousand EU passport holders, European passport holders, that have fought with ISIS and we need to make sure we close the, the holes. Uh, 38 countries require an expedited visa, which is basically getting online, getting a visa, and we need to close those holes. I'm glad, you know, finally uh, that my, my colleagues in the side understand the threat. Well, let's talk about that fiancé visa because that's the same visa that Tashfeen Malik used to get in here. She went through the vetting process. No one saw any indication that she was radicalized. Will this bill do anything to change that protocol? Well, it does. What it does is more information sharing between countries, which is, which is critical. And also, you, you look at who is coming in here. The vetting process obviously was broke. And so I think that it doesn't close the holes completely, but it goes a long way to reducing the threat. I think that the government's main job is to keep our people safe. And personally, you know, when a mom drops off the kids at school, I want to sure, make sure that mom feels safe and the kids are safe. And so I, I think this moves it in the right direction, and I'm glad Congress took action. Many have suggested, uh, I shouldn't say many, but some have suggested, for example, Donald Trump has suggested that we ban Muslims from entering this country. Some people suggest that we should ban all immigration until our system has been perfected or at least modified. What are your thoughts about these proposals? Well, terrorism comes in all, all shapes and sizes. You know, just a few weeks ago, the president said, you know, he called out Congress for saying Congress is, you know, is, is in fear of women and children. I think after the California incident that, you know, once again, is that terrorism can take the form of a woman and a child. And unfortunately, as a former SEAL commander overseas, I've seen children uh, conduct acts of terrorism. So I think we have to be very, very prudent and make sure we know who's coming in this country. And again, you know, our, our southern border is wide open. We need to secure our southern border. We need to pay attention to our northern border. And certainly at Congress, again, we took action on suspending the refugees until we get a clearer idea what the vetting process is and make sure we're sure that we have, we know who's in coming to this country. And the last point is terrorist is more than just the, the individual that pulls the trigger or ignites the bomb. Terrorism also involves those who are complicit, those who would give, you know, weapons to a terrorism uh, suspect or uh, provide safe haven, harbors, fuel, uh, you know, those type of things. So you have to look at the terrorism as a, as a whole and understand that if you come to this country and your intention is to do us harm, we'll find you. Overall, though, will this bill make us safer? Yes. And I'm confident uh, it will make us safer. You know, nothing will make us 100% safer, but it will, it will make us safer, and it does close the holes, uh, the major holes that have been identified. But we still have to be vigilant and prudent as, as a people. If you see an activity that's suspicious, you know, please report it. How do you draw that line, though, where you're not racially profiling someone? 
Well, it's not a question of whether you're a Muslim or a Lutheran or a Catholic. It's whether you're a terrorist or have ter terrorist inclinations. So I don't think religion itself is a litmus test, but certainly if you come from an, an area that is unstable, you come from an area that has you know, more terrorist activities than others, and, and you come from a background that has either been complicit, supportive, or no people, I think we need to be very, very careful, regardless of Muslim or Christian or, or whatever your religious affiliation. The point is, is we may make sure that there's no terrorists or those that would support terrorism in our country. Congressman Zinke, thanks so much for your time. Delighted and Merry Christmas. You too. Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump were once again the targets of late night. Find out what they said in today's special edition of Headlines and Punchlines.